So when we expand r of x, we need to make sure that we have the binomial x minus 3 twice, because that's what's happening. Now the next thing, there's two things you could do with that negative 1 next, because of the commutative and associative properties of multiplication. You could either distribute the negative 1 to x minus 3, and then go from there. Or you could keep the negative 1 and then distribute it after you've multiplied your binomials. It doesn't matter which one of those you do. It's like you've got to multiply three things. You can multiply those three things in any order you want. Okay. Uh, so either way, when you do that, we would end up with a negative x squared plus 6x minus 5, which shows that this vertex form is the same function as this standard form. Okay, so that's, that's where we're going to stay. We know there is another form that gives us the same function. It just looks different. Everybody good with that? We kind of just proved it, right? So here's what you're going to do next. You're going to just look for a pattern for us to start testing in decimals in a moment with where the vertex is located and the function itself. So we're going to look at H and R. This vertex is 3, 4. Can someone read me the H one again just so we can all look at the same thing here? It's H of X equals... X I can plus actually, two. yeah, x plus 2 minus 4. I can, I can just look at the graph and get it. I don't know. I'm so r of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 4. So I want you to try to make a connection between the vertex and the function, and then I'm going to start testing things out on decimal. So just make like an educated guess or, or something that you notice, and then we're going to start testing it out. So friends, are we seeing there's like a 2 and a 4 and a 2 and a 4 at least there? Yep. And we're seeing there's a 3 and a 4 and a 3 and a 4? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we see some numbers and we see them popping up in the function. The next thing we're going to do, like we've done with a lot of the quadratics, is we're going to use Desmos to, to look for other patterns, like what is happening visually. So you're going to first start by testing out, right here, changing the number inside the parentheses to see what happens. All right? So change the number inside the parentheses, see if you can establish a pattern. Then... You're going to change the constant and see if you can change a pattern. And finally, you're going to change the coefficient in front and see how it changes. Do not start number three yet because we need to go over one and two before you do three, all right? So one and two, one person per pair on decimals. Look for what's happening. For task one, you're comparing x squared to the quadratic where we have something like x minus two squared. So the, what, what happened to my vertex? It just, like, to, the right. to the right. So someone hit me with one they think will put my vertex at negative 4. Oh, X Troy, four. X plus 4 squared. Square. All right. Someone hit me with one they think will put my vertex at um, 6. Elsa? Yeah. Now, let's talk about why this is working, okay? The reason this is working is uh, this, uh, we already know our x-intercept here is 6. It's to get the 6, 0. Now, when we put in 6 for x, it pumps out 0. That's why. So how many answers are there to this? One. Just one, and it's on the x-axis. Essentially, it shifts our whole thing to establish our axis of symmetry then at that 6, 0. Now, um, Raise your hand if you need more time putting constants after these. Everybody got it? You want a little more? Well, let's do this together. The next thing I want to show you before I throw a constant on there is watch what happens when I have the same thing, but I give it a negative coefficient. Yeah, because when I distribute, I'm going to have a negative x squared now instead of an x squared if I'm looking at standard form, right? And if I have um, a larger absolute value negative, should it be more narrow or wide, do you think? narrower. Let's, let's double check. Okay. So that principle hasn't changed. That's been the same. That, that coefficient of our quadratic term, which that's what this will change. The larger absolute value, the more narrow. The smaller the absolute value, the more wide. And then the negative makes it go down instead of up. So let's focus then. I'm going to get rid of these. Let's focus then on what happens with the constant. So this is shifting me left or right. There's already been a translation left or right that's happened. 
So watch what happens when I make my constant here. Let's make it two. It goes up two. Let's give this a negative four constant. It goes down. So, so this isn't the y-intercept, though. Because the x-intercept is on the, there's one spot, we've almost like reestablished the y-axis, and then we shift up or down. So this part's sending us left or right. This part's up or down. So who can make this vertex go through 6, negative 1 for me? What do I need to make my constant? Ivy? Let's try it. That meant I went up 1 with plus 1. I wanted at 6, negative 1. So what do you want to try to do to adjust? Minus. So this one's outside of the parentheses. Just like the constant in standard form shifting us up or down, this is shifting us up or down. But are we at the origin? No. no. So I, I can, where, where things get messy is a lot of people will see this and say that's the y-intercept. Let me prove to you that it's not the y-intercept by looking at that one. If I were to expand out x minus 2 plus 2, to get this in standard form, I have x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 2. Guess what my y-intercept is? 6. We also know that the y-intercept isn't 2 because the y-intercept happens when x is 0. And if I put 0 in here, I get 4 plus 2 or 6. So I get that it looks like the y-intercept because in standard form, the thing that's the constant is the y-intercept. But this is in point vertex form. Big idea. Making this the zero gives me my axis of symmetry. So that's why that x is negative four. The negative four has to be my axis of symmetry in this context. And then the constant is going to be the y value of my vertex because when x is negative four, y is negative four in that case, right? So I'm gonna quiz a couple people. Be a, don't be afraid, put yourself out there. Kai's ready. Kai's up first. Kai, I want one. I want one, and I'll, do, I'll give you this. I'll give, we'll get started with this. Something like this. I want it to have an x-intercept of 2. So tell me what to do. Let's try that out. Plus 2. Okay, good, that's a good adjustment. And the reason this is going to give me the axis of symmetry at 2 is because it reestablishes that 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, but Kai... I want my vertex to go through, uh, I want it to be 2, 6. So how am I going to get this, my vertex to be 2, 6? Boom. All right. Uh, Ryan, I want one with a vertex of 3, 3. So uh, 3, 3? Tell me what to do. X what? Uh, minus, three. minus 3 squared, okay. Whoa! Three. Okay, we're all good. Okay, that, that gives me my 3 part of my axis symmetry, but I want it 3, 3 for my vertex. Uh, plus, three. plus 3, 3, 3. Good there job, it is. Ryan. Now, the thing I want to point out is check this out. Same vertex when I slap a 6 in front of here. You ready? Boom. Because what's the only thing that co leading coefficient is going to do? Oh, it's going to be narrow. Narrows. Watch, negative 6, guess what? Same vertex. Okay, so big idea. Inside these parentheses, shifting us left or right, constant sh shifting us up or down, that's always giving us our vertex. And here's, wh here, here's what's so awesome. You ready for this? This is not part of the lesson thing, but watch this. Going back to the warm-up. Remember this warm-up, y'all? Here's what's amazing. I'm only going to look at set 2. And with the knowledge base we have now, look what we can do with set two. We can say the y-intercept is negative five, the x-intercepts are uh, five, zero, and one, zero, and we can say the vertex is three, four. We also know that it opens down. Like, just looking at it. Before this unit, if we looked at this, it looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, right? Do you see what? Well, it might still look like mumbo jumbo, but we can quickly pull things we know from experience from each one of the forms. And while we can get everything out of one form, are you seeing that different forms definitely have their strengths? Like, we can get a vertex out of this. We did it already. 
right? We found the zeros went halfway between, substituted x in. What's easier, that or looking at the three and four there? So different things have different strengths. Let's leverage those strengths. That's the whole point of the different forms. So you're going to practice this next in that little table. You're going to get, whoops, too far. You're going to fill out that table with the vertex, and does it open up or down? So this x right here has to be negative 10. And when that x is negative 10, y is 0. It opens up because this is positive. This x has to be 4, which means when x is 4, y is 8. Opens up because this is positive. This x needs to be 4. When that's 4, I got 8. That means down. This x has to be 0. When x is 0, y is negative 7. Opens up because it's a positive. When x is negative 3, y is negative 5. Has to open up. What does that one half tell us, though? Wider. Like, it doesn't change up or down, but it's wider. Okay? This x has to be negative 100 at the vertex, which means when x is negative 100, y is 50. Open down because it's negative. And the last one. The opposite of M, and then I've got N, and then A, it depends. Positive up, negative down. You could have a negative A. What happens if A is negative 3? Yeah. So it depends if it's positive or negative. Great. So... Let's make sure here. Can we recognize vertex form? Yes, we can. Yes. And can we relate numbers in vertex form to the graph? Yes. Yeah, actually very nice to get the vertex from vertex form, which is maybe why it's either that or uh, Sir Vertex discovered it. I'm not sure which one. Maybe it's named after Sir Vertex. He's, a, he's, a, he's related to Sir Conference. Yeah.